How hard was it for you to get out of bed today? Were you late for work? If you were, you were not alone. There's a new survey out that says nearly 30% of Americans are late for work. we got a business strategist, and I'm guessing it's not a good business strategy to be late for work. Here's Michael Ray Newman. Good morning. <laughs> good morning. How y'all doing? All right. Let's talk about the, the importance of being timely at work, you know, and I, and I don't want to make any kind of generational uh now, now, stereotypes, but I will tell you that there's a lot of people who don't value the importance of being on time as people once did. Well, you may not uh, make any generational stereotypes, but the fact of the matter is last year there were more millennials in the workplace than boomers, and that is a culture shift in time management, Just be, not, not because they're millennials, but just because they're youth as well. I mean, the, the word balance and, you know, uh, promptness, those things are still yet to be learned, number one, but the technology age that we're in, and the fact of the matter is is that a lot of times we're checking our email before, right before we go to bed. So sometimes getting to work on time, they feel like they've also been putting work even after hours. So is it really important for me to get to work on hours? I mean, that is, uh, that's, that's what we've been seeing anyway. I guess it's the finish strong mentality. Hey, Michael Ray, I, I have to ask you about this. You know, back in the day, it was the dog ate my homework. I was late to school because of the weather. <laughs> I was late to school because of traffic. Any of those old school excuses still hold water these days for reasons why people are showing up late in such numbers? I'm not sure if they ever have really held water. But those, <laughs> excuses, <laughs> there's, those excuses are still there, and they're even, they've even been more creative. Than uh, for some of the things, the reason they are late for work. But yeah, there, and we have seen an uptick for sure in the promptness at work, and people are challenging that. But the reality is, sometimes sometimes we need to be at work on time. And then there's sometimes if we really do put in the work, and if we are truly acting like an entrepreneur, which is someone who drives business, even though they're working for a company, they treat it like a like it's their business. Those are the ones where you really do you can get more productivity out of those people. Michael Ray Newman is a business strategist. Let's talk about from employee to employee if you've got these flexible hours. And you've got one employee who may work 8 to 5. you get got another one who may work 7 to 4. But what if you got one that works like, you know, 9 to 3? <laughs> How does that work when it comes to employee morale and these tardy people or early leavers? I mean, believe me, when you're on the road in this city at 3.30 or 4, you see half the people already going home from work. That is crazy. And the cattle call at five is kind of became four forty five, four twenty five. I mean you do see people jumping out a lot earlier and it does get a lot more crowded on the roads today. Now it's performance based and and here's a lot of times these newer the newer generation wants to collaborate and not compete and they want to just get by. Those people right there definitely hurt culture, they hurt morale, but the most important thing they hope they hurt the bottom line and that can't stand very long. So it really is inspect what you expect. If you're going to lack, be a little more lax on your time clock as an employee, you watch employer to employer, and you really take it on a case-by-case -case basis. Our pal Michael Ray Newman joining us this morning. He's a business strategist. And, Michael Ray, right before Christmas, we were looking at a study and, and, and up to right after Christmas uh, talking about online sales versus brick and mortar. The the fact that a lot of businesses are, are more more or less uh, leaving brick and mortar, not necessarily in droves, but we're seeing more, I guess, e-commerce. Does that play a role in folks maybe showing up a little bit later to physical addresses? It, it really does, brother. And it's not really, you're not seeing a big uh, uptick in that right now. They're still keeping all their brick and mortar stores. But think about everything that we can automate now. So what you could do in an eight-hour day, you should do an eight-hour day. Sometimes you can do it in six and a five-hour day. But you don't want to take your foot off the gas. We want to encourage our employees to spend 10% of their time just being creative and then bring those ideas to us. Because if you don't encourage your employees to do that, in the way these millennials work now, the younger generation works, they have side hustles. They're going to find something else to do because they're bored. So we have to keep them engaged. That's a really good, that's a really good point that leads to the point of keeping these – keeping these guys engaged at work. All right, I hear what you're saying, and I and I get it, but why does it annoy me that we have to super serve the millennials? <laughs> Boy, I, I, you're, you're with, you know what? You're with the majority of the people in the workplace. Are you kidding me? Do we really have to be like this? But now think about it. It goes both ways. Do we, we're, we're, are we super serving them, or are we not really taking advantage of the opportunities that we have now? Are you saying we need to go out and drive some Uber today after the show? <laughs> That's the 
commercial. Get your side hustle. That's exactly what it is. So, That's yeah, right. get your side hustle. It's it's interesting. You know, Tim and I are both Gen Xers, but I guess you get it kind of a, d a different culture on both sides, whether it's the the baby boomers or the millennials. But it's very contrasting on each side of us. It really, truly is. And I'm a Gen Xer, also. What we really need to do is embrace the technology because what we do have in these millennials, the older millennials, the 33, 34 years, are realizing that uh, that these that we aren't as uh, uh, behind the times as they think, or our way of thinking has a lot of wisdom. I hate, you know even me saying that I have wisdom, but <laughs> we have a lot of we have experience. <laughs> and the, the true the true excellers in, in the millennial generation are not going to be the techies. They're not going to be the geeks. Or, and not, those guys, the people that are really going to make money are the people that can embrace the older things and implement them in the new technology and the mediators, the true communicators. Because we can only say so many things by emojis, text, and emails. There is a, there is a point we have to show up. We have to show up on time, and we have to be face-to-face. -face. It's like Garth Brooks says, old school, new school, I guess. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Michael Ray Newman, business yeah, strategist. It's always good to hear from you, and don't be a stranger. Hopefully, we'll uh, talk to you again real soon, and have yourself a fantastic week, sir. You too, brother. I appreciate y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Good All to right. talk to you. I like him. Yeah, 752.